Good morning all, new printed circuit boards from JLC PCB. Shall we have a look at what's inside the box? Um, well, there's this masking tape and I think the idea of this is that uh, you use it to tape down your stencil if you're doing surface mount stuff. I'm not doing surface mount stuff. I'm doing three hole stuff. So um, there are just five boards in here. I only need one, so I ordered the minimum order quantity, which is five. And uh, these are yellow, 1.6 millimeter thick with a Hassle hot air surface leveling or hot air solder leveling uh, finish. So let's get them open, have a look. So let's cut this open. Now these are, I've done in yellow because they are a version two printed circuit board. It's the output mixer amplifier version two. Now here's my versioning system. Uh, boards which are green are version one. Uh, boards which are yellow are version two and boards which are red, which I haven't done any yet, are version three if it ever gets to that stage. Um, this VU meter board is yellow. So it is in itself a version two board. So uh, consistent with what I've been doing recently, I've been putting most of my signal traces on the top layer. Most of my silk screen, of course, is also on the top layer because that's where the components are. On the bottom layer, I put my power traces so that you can see that they come from the JST connector up here, a couple of uh, tantalum capacitors for decoupling or smoothing. They run down to pins mm, seven and four of these dual op amps. Oh, that must be a single op amp because it's eight and four. And they also run up to this uh, eight pin ribbon cable connector and that's what's new about this revision 2 board over the revision 1. Let's take a look at the original board. So it's here attached to uh, my panel <laughs> and yes I've definitely moved away from this um, mini jack, this stereo mini jack idea. That didn't really work. Okay let's get this off the panel and put these two side by side. So here it is, uh, three potentiometers, which are all volume controls. This is a little mixer in effect. There's a mono quarter inch jack on the underside, courtesy of a little daughter board so that you can set the distance between these two centers, which is an inch and a quarter. It's also an inch and a quarter between these. A couple of op amps, there's a 1458 dual op amp and a 741 single op amp, JST for power. And then this one had all these mini jacks, which turned out to be a bad idea. Um, well, I'll show you why it turned out to be a bad idea shortly. But here's the new board. It's uh, the same size, got three pots on it again, two op amps again. Uh, I've moved the power round the corner and that's because I haven't got all these uh, stereo mini jacks now. I've just got two pads here and they're gonna take RCAs very much like that. It's an RCA on its own little daughter board and there are going to be two of those on here which take uh, inputs from the microphone preamp side of things, the excitation preamp and input side of things so that you can listen to those I think on these two pots but you can probably uh, see where the tracks are rooted. Yes they are rooted. This pad will go to that pot, this pad goes to that pot and then there's a final mixer stage and the final output of the unit yeah, I think it comes out of there. So here's how it was going to work. I was going to use one of these mini jack plugged into these sockets. Now there are seven of these assemblies. Yes, seven all laid out side by side. These are all the filters, the speech filters on the plug in boards and the excitation filters down on the base board or the carrier filter. And this is the modulator filter. Let's take out these two speech filter boards. And then the idea is that this would have two RCAs plugged into here. And this uh, RCA to jack cable would plug into these. Now there's already a problem because I've got capacitors here which are fouling this. So if I raise these up slightly, and these actually you can use without soldering. They make quite a good connection uh, in the holes. Obviously I would solder them eventually. So that doesn't quite work as it stands. But there's an even bigger problem. And that is that once that's in place, these filter boards just 
don't fit on there because when you're designing these printed circuit boards you're working in two dimensions you're working just on a flat screen and it's very difficult to think about how some boards are going to three-dimensionally interact with other boards so it's all turned into a bit of a horror show these do fit and they do make a contact and it would actually work and we can try that but it's just not ideal is it and then the idea is that this plugs into there but then I'm, I don't particularly like the sort of difference in cable style and of course there are seven of these so it's all going to be quite messy these things are fine they're very narrow they sit side by side no problem at all but the whole thing is just very messy and I wanted to use audio connectors where you have what is an audio signal and these aren't quite audio signals they're very close but not quite so my new idea and i did incorporate it onto these uh, filter boards is a ribbon cable so i put ribbon cable connectors on here these uh, have these audio signals down on them so if i run a ribbon cable across all of these boards and it is a common cable all of the signals run down onto these this common connection which is a virtual ground for the op amps down here um, then I can run the signal down to this board and of course I've now got this ribbon cable connector on there This clearly doesn't have any ribbon cable connector. It just has the mini jacks So by switching over to the ribbon cable, I can get rid of all this messy wiring and uh, Do it on ribbon cable, which is cut to length and it'll all be much more beautiful. I think So let's untangle all of this. I'll take these speech filter daughter boards out I'll just remove these from there and then these of course will fit much better in here the reason these uh, speech filter boards are daughter boards in these connectors is because I want to be able to shuffle them around so that the speech filter frequencies don't match the uh, excitation frequencies that'll be fun so yes that looks a lot better and the ribbon cables will of course sit underneath these boards and be out of the way okay so the next thing I need to do is make up one of these boards, assemble it, I'll put the pots in and everything, get this all ready, and then I might even try and test this, see if it works. And look, very sensibly I've put the values of the components on the board, which means I don't have to do any lookup table nonsense, so I can get these resistors, uh, the two tantalum one microfarad capacitors, and the ICs on there in record time, let's get stuck in. So the resistors are all on. Now, as you saw on this ribbon cable, I've put the two power lines, uh, plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts. There are grounds, of course, on there as well. There are four grounds along that side, but I've also put the uh, audio returns. These are the audios coming from the filter boards back into this uh, output mixer amplifier board. So theoretically, my filter boards these or my filter modules don't need to be powered because they're all going to receive power on that ribbon cable now whether or not that ribbon cable is going to be man enough to take the power for seven of these i don't know but i've got the option of uh, powering these separately that will create power line loops but i don't seem to have had any problem with that so far but i just thought i'd put that option on there so the jst connector and uh, two tantalum capacitors I've beefed them up a bit to 3.3 microfarads because I've got thousands of them and also I thought well it's an audio it's the final audio stage let's just put a bit of extra uh, suppression of any noise on the power lines there now the thing about this one connector powering seven of these modules is it just doesn't look like it's up to the job so I probably will put power despite the fact that power is running up through the ribbon cable I'll probably put power separately onto these modules. Maybe not if there are one or two and I'm just testing them, but if the whole lot are in place, yeah, I think powering them from just that one connector is not really on. So, integrated circuits are in place. I've put this uh, ribbon cable connector there, but I'm a little bit concerned about that because it's quite close to the pot. Now, on the other end of that, it's actually even closer to the pot. But of course on this one, I've not fitted the pots yet, I've just put links in. 
this one, um, the connector is on the underside, so it doesn't really matter. But on this one, it's on the top, so I just want to check. This is the wrong connector, but it's got the same, it'll have the same uh, offset out. Just want to check when that's on, if it's near the pot. Oh no, it's fine, actually. Yeah, there's quite a good clearance between the pot outline, and I assume that's accurate to the connector. So as I say, I shifted that slightly down. So in fact, when this is all uh, assembled on the front panel, there will be an ever so slight kink between the ribbon cable there and the ribbon cable down here, but it's a tenth of an inch. It's, it's tiny, it's not going to matter. Uh, oh, what's next? Right, now this uh, mono quarter inch jack plug daughter board, which will sit on the underside, so we've got pots on the top, the socket on the bottom. For that, I'm going to push some four pin DuPont pin arrays into this breadboard just to hold them. Put the jack daughter on there. Now, I just want to check it's the right way around and I can do that by looking at this one. So jack daughter is where that will sit. Yeah, so that looks right. Let's solder that and then get the jack socket on it. So this daughter board goes on the underside of my board, the pot's going to go on the top and then it's got a little bit of slide adjustment in and out there to set the height. So I'm not going to solder that in just yet. Let's get the pots on the top. Now I've bought some new 10k log pots, here they are. Let's go. So I'm just pedantically trying to get the pots or uh, well, the offset between the socket and the pots such that the pots are sitting in the middle of their holes uh, not right over one side so there remains a bit of wiggle room when this is all done. It's a bit pedantic but uh, I think it's worth the extra time. So I don't know whether you can see, oh keep changing the light level, but that pot shaft thread is equidistant within that hole. Very nice. And for the moment, I'm just going to put these two uh, RCAs as a push fit in there. I mean, they really are very tight and they make a very good connection, even without soldering. I could solder them, but I haven't made enough of these yet. And I kind of swap them around and use them in different places. So I quite like the fact that they just push in. <laughs> there it is. It's finished. Uh, two RCA inputs, three potentiometers, because of course the third input comes in on the ribbon cable and there's the final output which will go to the power amplifier. Of course this is mono, the vocoder is a mono instrument. And uh, this is the board with some of these nice green and black knobs on there all aligned for the uh, zero or minimum volume position. Good, that looks good. So now the next thing is to test this. So I want to put some power to it and hook up some audio in the audio out, put it on a speaker, possibly even use my new little voice recorder thing to see if I can let you hear what this thing sounds like with all its very old style op amps, 741s. Are you going to hear the noise floor? Who knows? So I'm going to set this up with microphone preamplifier here. I've had to write on it that it's the mic preamplifier. I'm going to put a VU meter in here because I want to uh, set the zero dB level which will be that orange LED through the system so that I can get a consistent uh, level. Um, for this I need the four-way connector because it's got five volts to drive the LEDs as well as the 12012, but a wire's pulled out. However, I seem to remember I've received these, so let's have a look for that envelope. Mini in-video post bag. Oh, I've got to be careful cutting these because they're wires. So these are marked four-way JST cables through my identifying process. Oh, the colours are a bit yuck, aren't they? But uh, of course the next thing is, are they wired pin one to pin one? Or are they going to be wired pin one to pin four? Let's have a look. Orange at the top and there are the little connectors. Orange at the top and there are the connectors. So yeah, these are wired pin one through to pin four. I'm going to have to uh, swap them all around. Actually, I was just pulling this side out and I realised that on pin 1, and there is a little arrow for pin 1 on the plastic, is orange. Then there's black, which is my zero volts. Well, that's okay. 
then green would be minus 12 volts and purple would be 5 volts so I think actually I'll swap this end to keep black in the position of 0 volts. What's interesting about these wires is when you sort of pull them that's that way round these actually are all kind of fitted to the wires in such a position that they would be correct to have this put on the correct way round. In other words, the opposite way round to that in order so that pin one goes to pin one. So it's almost they've been made up correctly and then poked into these little um, female shells just in the wrong sequence. It's just weird. Anyway, that's now correct. If you can see the little arrows, it's just there. It's quite hard to see, but that's pin one and it's orange and on the other end it's orange so they are in the correct sequence. That's the first cable done. So this is looking nice and neat. I've got my uh, power supply here which takes 12 volts in or a voltage around 12 volts. Uh, puts out my plus and minus 12 and uh, plus 5 which goes to there. So that can sit there. These are my boards. Now I need the interconnecting audio cables, which are all uh, RCA phono to phono. So a little short one to go from the mic preamplifier to the VU meter, like so. And I think I've now received some longer ones of these, so I can go from the mic preamp across to the output amp. Yeah, let's see if I can find the envelope. Yeah, here it is. I'm not going to do um, a screen capture for these, but these ones came from Cable Stop. Uh, oh yes, now they might not be quite long enough. I think there are some longer ones. Yeah, these. And they're three colour because they're designed for video and stereo audio, but I'm going to peel them into individuals. Uh, yeah, these came from Cable Stop. And the four-way cable here came from well, whoever it was that I bought these red and black ones from, uh, there's a red three-way. And that's in uh, post bag 141, which is titled actually JST Cables. So if you want to find out who they came from, they're very nicely made up. They're, they're very well crimped. It's just that they do insist on connecting pin one to the opposite pin on the other end. Never mind, you can rearrange the wires. So let's be nice and consistent and use the white one. Oh, it's in the middle, so I'm just going to peel all these apart so they're individual cables and use the white one to hook uh, to go around this. Don't really want it lying across the power supply, but let's see what we can achieve to go from there to one of these inputs. Well, let's go to this one because then that will be on the left hand pot so I can raise the volume of that. So I'll adjust the volume on here to get the mic level to move the VU meter up to the zero dB point. And I'll use the volume on here to set the output level so that it doesn't distort my little uh, audio recorder. Right, let's power up. So the first thing is to power up the power supply and hope that I've got all my cable polarities correct. So let's plug that in. Yeah, we've got a nice little pulse on there. Uh, if I turn the gain up on this. Yeah, we are getting some noise uh, coming in. This is a very high gain preamp. So there's obviously hum coming in there. And if I get anywhere near the input socket underneath, the two sockets underneath, that noise goes up. But anyway, let's uh, put a microphone in there and try and set a zero dB point. Sorry about the reflection off the top of that top LED. Perhaps I'll stick something on top of there. Right, so that's all powered up. I'm going to use the Kongin microphone. Pretty sure this is dynamic because there's no battery in here. You can put a battery in here, but that's to power the radio uh, transmitter thing that this comes with. So uh, pretty sure this must be dynamic because how would an electret be powered? And there's no external powering or anything like that. But anyway, let's plug that in. I'll put the tone control to the center. This tone control is still back to front. It's still more trebly at the anti-clockwise end, which is not great. So let's turn up the microphone. Oh, I've got to put the microphone to either the first position. Yeah, so that's working. I'll turn it a little bit higher, just so that I get the yellow LED coming on as I speak. 
Good, so that's the input side done. Now let's see if the output side works. So now I need to get this, which is a mono uh, output, to stereo so that I can plug a stereo cable into there. It's not essential actually because this only records in mono. Anyway, I'll just have to match the cables. And so I'm not going to really be able to use these. Well, I could use that, I suppose. Actually, I could use that coming out of the quarter inch socket splitting to well I suppose if I come out the other way it'd be a bit more sensible uh, split that ooh, that's a bit lopsided to stereo and then use a stereo cable to take that into the voice recorder yeah let's try that right so this contraption here brings the mono out uh, splits it into stereo just a passive split that sits under there without shorting I think this other end, which has got one of these suppressors, which could be handy, I suppose, is going to go into the uh, mic input, which is that, yeah, that's that side. And that means I can now record what's coming through this system. Hmm, let's try making a recording. So record type is HQ, that's right. And record from is, oh, that's going to be audio input which will turn down the gain of this and hopefully lower distortion and noise audio input what else is there monitor now I don't want the monitor set or at least I don't need to plug anything into there otherwise I'm just going to get feedback so I'm going to do this without a speaker and just let's turn this up to the mid position I've no idea what level and this has no level meters um, so let's come out of no, I don't want monitor set. Well, monitor's on. I'll leave it on, but there's nothing plugged in and it won't play through the speaker. That won't happen. How do you get out of this? Yes, that's right. You go to exit. And now we can go into record mode. Excellent. So the main thing which enables me to synchronize this while I'm editing is the red light. So let's, oh, that turns the light on. Let's start a recording. Wait for that red light to come on. There it is, so that should be recording now. Right, let's speak into the microphone in such a way that I'm getting really just the yellow light triggering, which sets my 0 dB point. And that should be a recording um, with the full clarity of the system to enable you guys to see whether it's uh, a sort of noise-free, clean, recording awesome and uh, now you've heard that haven't you because that will have been edited but I'm just gonna play this because I haven't heard it, there it is. see what this right, let's speak into the microphone in such a way that I'm getting really just the yellow light trigger yeah well I mean that sounds okay the speakers a bit distorted but uh, the proof of the pudding as it were is what it sounds like in the final edit. Suppose I better go and do some editing. Right, that was clearly distorting. And in fact, if you look at Movie Maker, in fact, I'm gonna show you Movie Maker. Now I can't screen grab this because my PC won't run OBS and Movie Maker at the same time. But you can see here, this is the audio track and I line it up so that the audio on the video track and the audio on the audio track are kind of in alignment. And you can see that um, I'm clipping on the audio track. So I'm just going to wind that down a bit uh, using this potentiometer. So let's bring that down to about there and try again. Right, one button record. Let's get that recording first. Just need to see that red light come on because that's what gives me my indication that it's all working. Uh, right, so now let's go for a zero dB speaking into the microphone with about zero dBs on the LED bar graph there and try that, see what the quality of that's like. Right, clipping again. Uh, so I need to do some more experiments on setting this level and perhaps that should go down to horizontal like that. I'll try that, but you don't want to watch all that stuff, so I'll do that and try and get this set up so that it records uh, reliably because certainly I need to get all that sorted out before we start trying to listen to uh, the output from these filter modules. So I shall sort that out. In the meantime, that's pretty much it for this one. So cheerio.